now, because I'm quite cool and interesting, spent quite a long time recently going through past paper questions for AQA, GCSE, Geography. And that has helped me identify a couple of areas for each topic, which I think are a little bit more likely to come up on the exam this year. So here is what I think. In the natural hazards topic, one thing which hasn't come up at all very much, particularly for a longer six mark or nine mark question, is tropical storm formation. So you could get asked a six mark question, explain how tropical storms are formed. Um, remember, if you get that question, you need to talk about ocean temperature needs to be 27 degrees or above. It needs to be about 60 metres deep, at least, ocean water. Um, the, the warm ocean water causes air above it to rise and condense to form clouds. Um, those clouds are called cumulonimbus clouds. Because the storm is an area of low pressure, air from around the storm rushes in towards the centre. Um, and then the whole storm rotates because of the Coriolis force, the force of the Earth's rotation. Um, some of that air does actually cool down and it sinks down in the centre, creating the eye. So that's the sort of thing you'd have to talk about if you got that question. Um, another thing you could get asked, which might relate to that question, is about how might climate change impact on tropical storms? Now, this could be a six or a nine mark question um, if you've got a maybe a figure to go with it. Um, essentially, what you'd need to remember is that tropical storms are likely to get stronger, more intense because of climate change. Those warmer oceans are going to fuel um, tropical storms and, and help them develop into stronger storms. Um, so more intense. If the ocean gets a bit warmer further away from the equator, we might also start to get storms further north and further south of the equator. So for example, Brazil did get a tropical storm for the first time in about 2004, and we might see more cases like that. The last one is that some people think tropical storms, lots of scientists actually think that storms are not necessarily going to become more frequent. So we probably won't get more storms, but they probably will be stronger and they will occur in new places. My last prediction for the hazards topic is to do with hazard management. Now, whilst there are some big case studies to know, so case studies of earthquakes in contrasting countries, um, I do think it's a little bit more likely this year that they could ask you about how earthquakes can be managed. And for that, you need to remember the three Ps, prediction, planning and protection. Knowing a few examples of each of those things um, and yeah, just weighing up, maybe talking about the fact that earthquakes cannot reliably, reliably be predicted. Um, but, you know, if you do predict to an extent, so say you, you, you know, you detect a, a mini earthquake before the main one, that can be useful at helping um, you evacuate people. Protection is to do with reinforcing buildings, and, and that is probably the best way of reducing deaths, but it is the most expensive one. So actually planning, getting emergency services ready, evacuation routes, earthquake survival kits in, in people's homes, that's probably a more realis realistic one for LIC countries. So that is also a really good one. In the living world topic, there is always a six marker and a nine mark question. Six marker to do with tropical rainforests. Last year, it was about causes of deforestation. We've had impacts of deforestation fairly recently as well. So I think this year it's more likely you could get asked about um, a, a deforestation management, like what can be done about it to sustainably manage the forest. If you've got a question about that, you might talk about selective logging. So only cutting down certain trees, certain species, etc. You might talk about ecotourism, um, conservation, so designating protected areas. Um, and maybe international agreements about deforestation and kind of getting products from sustainable sources. In the hot deserts section, um, I think desertification is a little bit more likely this year. You do need to know a, a, a case study of a hot desert um, and you do need to know um, a bit about adaptations in the desert as well. But those two have come up a little bit more recently in the exam. So I think it's more like you could get asked what causes desertification and how can desertification be managed? Finally, in the rivers and coast section, um, section C, UK landscapes, got a couple of predictions. Um, I think hydrographs 
and knowing a bit about what factors affect the shape of a hydrograph. So things like impermeable surfaces, steep slopes, um, amount of vegetation, um, knowing you know those different factors that affect hydrographs, I think that could be one thing. Um, you could need to know about, well, you will get asked a question about how a landform is formed. I think perhaps meanders and oxbow lakes might be a little bit more likely. Um, although, yeah, lots of lots of the different landform questions come up all the time, to be honest. It's quite hard to predict those. Um, in terms of the coast, I think sand dunes, though, is one area that's not come up at all pretty much ever. So knowing how sand dunes form, what conditions you need and how they change over time. I think that's something important to remember as well. If you want more videos like this for paper two and paper three, then make sure you comment and subscribe. Um, and yeah, if there's demand for it, then I'll keep them coming.